Do you want to take mechanical engineering but you're not sure what the courses are all about? Well just sit back, relax and by the end of this video you'll know if mechanical engineering is the right choice for you. Yeah, the idea that engineering is all about math and physics is by no means inaccurate. But it's also much more than that. You'll gain teamworking skills, analytical and logic skills, you'll also gain a deep understanding of different phenomenon happening around you, which is pretty cool if you're the type to enjoy educating your friends while they pretend to be interested. Oh, and maybe you'll learn how to party a little better. So, let's go through the typical mechanical engineering courses a student would take during a standard bachelor's degree and understand what these courses teach you, without using all the fancy equations and terminology. Advanced Calculus, also known as Calculus 3. You've probably already taken your first introductory calculus course and tackled integral calculus as well, but if you haven't, that's okay. We'll go through their main purpose really quick before seeing what advanced calculus is. Calculus 1 deals with finding the slope of the line tangent to a point on a curve. A line that touches a point on a curve and touches no other point is called a tangent line. All points on a graph have a tangent line and there are infinitely many because there are infinitely many points. If we can find the slope of this line, aka rise over run, we can tell things like the temperature change at a particular time, velocity of a falling object at a particular time, and population growth at a particular time, etc. Calculus 2. We know how to find the area of simple shapes such as triangles or rectangles. But what about these? Try to wrap your head around finding the areas of these. Calculus 2 aims at solving this problem. Similar to Calculus 2, in Advanced Calculus we ask the question of how to find the volume of irregular shapes such as this one here. We're usually used to finding volumes of simple objects such as cylinders or prisms, but not these. Advanced Calculus is also called Multivariable Calculus, which, in a nutshell, we are working in three-dimensional space. You'll probably be taking this in your freshman year. Ordinary Differential Equations Differential equations are equations that look very fancy as shown here in the picture. If you've done calculus before, then you'll understand that they are equations consisting of derivatives. We study them in engineering because they are absolutely essential to progress in the study of all scientific and engineering disciplines. These equations describe a lot of phenomena that occur around us such as the falling of an apple from a tree, the Earth's orbit, the motion of a fluid, the transfer of heat, and many, many others. The equation being written down below is an example of a differential equation representing population growth. When we solve these equations, they provide answers to important scientific questions that enable progress in confidently understanding the complex phenomenon being studied. This is why we take this course in our freshman year, so you can properly understand the future courses to come. The next course you'll take is Statics. Statics is a branch of physics and is concerned with all the forces acting on a body at rest under equilibrium. The study of statics goes as far back as ancient Greece. The methods used in statics have proved extremely useful in the design of buildings, bridges, and dams, and smaller things such as cranes or other mechanical devices. Here is an image of a bridge, and I've also shown above it what is known as a free body diagram. The force here can represent, for example, a car passing over or 1,000 cars stuck in traffic. If the load on the bridge weighs 10 tons, it will cause the bridge to sag downward. It's all about identifying the forces acting on a body. Remember, the key words for statics are at rest under equilibrium, which means all the forces acting on a body cancel out, to put it simply. If they didn't, then a bridge like this might collapse or fail. By the end of this course, you will learn how to properly analyze a system in equilibrium. The next course is another branch of physics called dynamics. Contrary to statics, dynamics deals with the motion of bodies in relation to physical factors that affect them such as force, mass, momentum, or energy. You'll learn about kinematics, which describes motion of an object without regards to its causes such as force or energy, and then you'll learn about kinetics, which focuses on objects in motion due to some external or internal force acting on them. Like statics, we usually draw free body diagrams such as this skier on the slope to properly analyze a problem. Before you can learn to draw complex schematics like this one, you'll need to understand the basics of mechanical engineering drawing, and that's what this course is for. In this course, you'll learn how to project a 3D object onto a 2D surface with top, front, and side views, such as shown here. You'll also learn about what goes into drawing a good schematic. 
Your course may involve drawing by hand using the old school method, or they may skip that and encourage you to use computer-aided drawing or CAD. In either case, you should learn how to use CAD. Mechanics of materials. Mechanics of materials is sort of like statics, but this time we take into account what the material is made of. For instance, if we have a steel beam, we know its properties from a textbook such as how elastic it is, how much stress steel can take before failing, etc. So with this knowledge, we solve problems on structures under different loadings such as axial, torsional, and flexural loading. We see how much stress it undergoes and how much strain. You kind of start seeing applications of the math and earlier physics course that you learned about. It's kind of cool. Material Science Material science is a bit of a change from your usual classes. While we've so far had macroscopic view of things, this course involves going under the microscope. We look at the crystal structure at the atomic level of different materials and analyze their structure. We must first start here before we can learn how materials fail or how strong they are. We also learn how some of the many types of steel are formed. This course also touches on properties of polymers and ceramics. All right, guys, that's the end of part one. If you enjoyed the video and or learned something here today, you can support me by subscribing to my channel and smashing that like button. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends or family who want to become mechanical engineers. Check out part two where we talk about the rest of the courses in the degree. I'll see you guys next time. <music>